Hello everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Transfer, Transform to a Profitable Subscription Business, brought to you by Technology Services Industry Association and sponsored by Service Source. My name is Inga Triago, your moderator for today. Before we get started, we just have a few housekeeping items. To maximize your webinar experience, click the question icon in the upper right corner of the registration to check your system for the most recent versions of browsers and Flash Player. Update to the most recent version available for the optimal viewing experience. Audio will be delivered via streaming. You will be in listen-only mode and need to listen via your computer or mobile device. Please check that your computer speakers are turned on. Webinar controls, including volume, are found below the presenter headshot area. To view your webinar, select your link to proceed to the player. If you are already registered, you can access by entering your email only at the top of the registration form, and you can join the webinar from any device. Ask questions at any time by sending your questions via the Ask a Question box on the left side of the webinar player. Feel free to enlarge your slides to full screen at any time via the full screen button, which will appear on the top right area of the slide area. There will be an exit survey at the end of today's webinar. Please provide your feedback on the content and experience by filling out the brief survey. And finally, a link to the recorded version of today's webinar and access to download the PDF of the presentation will be sent out in the next 24 hours via email. Once again, thank you for taking the time to join us today. I would now like to introduce our presenters today, John Ragsdale, VP Research, Technology, and Social for TSIA, and Chad Line, SVP Strategy and Corporate Development for Service Source. We do have a lot of exciting content to cover in the next 30 minutes, so let's jump right in and get started. Chad, the floor is yours. Great. Thank you for that introduction, and good day, everyone. As Inga mentioned, my name is Chad Line, and I'm SVP of Strategy and Corporate Development at Service Source. So before we dive in, I'll spare everyone a, a lengthy server source uh, commercial, but for those on the call who aren't familiar with us, I did want to highlight quickly that server source has been helping industry-leading companies in their evolution to subscription models for nearly two decades. In fact, we were founded around the same time that Mark Benioff launched Salesforce.com in the same year that Reed Hastings introduced a monthly subscription plan at Netflix. So over that time, over those 17 years, we've supported companies of all shapes and sizes, from innovative SaaS startups to $100 billion plus hardware and software makers, to multinational industrial and healthcare companies. So really we're spanning the gamut of the economy, all enabling them and helping them transform to succeed in a tough new era. So what is that era? Um, I'd argue that that era is the subscription era, and it's having a profound impact throughout the economy and across all industry sectors. If you aren't familiar with Dollar Shave Club, there are pretty good odds that at some point you've signed up with one of the over 700 plus quote unquote X in a box subscri subscription commerce companies, whether it be for meals, cosmetics, toys, pet products, there's even a Dirt of the Month Club. And while Dollar Shave Club is a poster child for success in the space, I would argue that what enabled their success wasn't their viral YouTube videos, as funny as they are, or the quality of the product. They focused on delivering an outcome recognizing early on that customers ultimately didn't want to buy a razor and really didn't care about five blades over four. From an outcomes perspective, what customers wanted was a seamless, was a comfortable shave. Dollar Shave Club delivered with a low-cost entry point, a simple and seamless customer experience, and a model with built-in tiered upsell opportunities, starting at a basic level and then progressing to uh, more valuable and expensive executive shaves. As the company's growth trajectory, as you see here, and then its sale last month to Unilever for $1 billion highlight, focusing on and then ultimately delivering on customers' desired outcomes can create tremendous value. As the Dollar Shave Club example highlights, subscription models are taking over the economy, and I'm sure we are all seeing this in our personal lives and in our businesses. Customer demands are changing and evolving faster than ever, putting more pressure on companies to transform their models or risk being irrelevant and left behind. In a recent survey from The Economist, 8 out of 10 companies are seeing major changes in how customers want to buy their products and services. Half of companies are in the midst of making major changes to how they price and deliver, and a full 84% are integrating subscription-type models into their businesses. Again, this data is, is a couple of years old, so I'd argue that that's even moved higher since then. At Service Source, we are seeing this with our clients around the world. Traditional ways of doing business are no longer good enough product offerings, pricing models, go-to-market strategies, team structures, and customer engagement models are all being disrupted. Revenue growth and profitability no longer hinge on just selling a good product or service. Rather, the new paradigm requires the ability to sell predictable and desired outcomes that enable your customers to succeed. So the good news is that companies are now focusing on outcomes and delivering customer success in a big way. 
But I would argue that we are still fairly early in the evolution. Organizations understand the importance of recurring revenue streams, yet the vast majority are struggling to cross the chasm to subscription models. As the chart above shows, of the top 50 global software companies, we've removed names here to, to preserve the innocent, uh, for the vast majority, subscription revenue accounts for less than 10%, and across these top 50, the median is actually less than 3%. So as companies like this try to expand this percentage, they faced increased costs trying to support legacy business models while simultaneously investing for the new era. At the same time, revenue shifts dramatically from the old world, where 80% was recognized up front, to the new world, where 80% is recognized over the life of the customer. So very dramatic shifts in the economics. In this environment, onboarding, adoption, usage analytics, upsell, cross-sell, and retention become even more critical factors, requiring a holistic approach to customer engagement. At Service Source, we are seeing our clients apply heightened focus throughout the organizations to successfully navigate this transition to a customer success mindset in this outcome economy. To go a little deeper, John Ragsdale is here to share some recent TSIA research and insights on what it takes to transform to a profitable subscription business. John, what can you tell us about what TSIA has seen in the market? Well, Chad, thank you very much for inviting me to be a part of this webinar today. And you are right, there is a lot of drama going on in the subscription world. Uh, and TSIA has uh, been writing about this and helping members with this uh, for a few years now. And uh, you were very kind not to mention uh, the names of the software companies, but uh, for all of you who have dialed into Thomas Law's Cloud 20 uh, webcast, you know we do list <laughs> names. and. Uh, even the companies that are generating a lot of crowd, uh, cloud uh, revenue are really not profitable. So we're helping companies who are struggling both with how to grow revenue uh, as well as how to be as profitable as possible. And on that profitable topic, I wanted to open with our fish slide. Uh, if you're coming to our conference uh, in Vegas next month, you'll see a few sessions on the agenda that talk about shrinking the fish. And we do tend to have our own vocabulary here at TSIA, so I thought it would be good to talk a little bit about what this means. So if you, uh, TSIA has been around for more than 30 years, and the bulk of our members have historically been on-premise hardware and software companies. And today we've got a mix of pure play cloud companies and a lot of the traditional hardware and software vendors who are moving from an on-premise model to a cloud model. And the reality is, uh, that you're going to go through a very complex and problematic transition uh, when you move from on-premise to cloud. And that is what uh, this slide is trying to illustrate. So uh, if we take enterprise software, for example, uh, CRM vendors uh, used to, you know, when you buy an on-premise product, you pay everything up front. So you're paying, you know, $3,000 per user up front. Uh, and then you implement the product and run with it. In a subscription model, you're paying whatever the subscription fee is, maybe $99 per user per month. So you're still getting the $3,000, but it's spread out over three years. So the first thing you notice when you move to a subscription model is your revenue drops, because of, instead of collecting all that money in advance, it's trickling in over time. Now, over time, you should, through scalability, be able to have ultimately many more customers, so ultimately your revenue should be growing faster. But the reality is you are going to take a hit while you make that transition. And the same is true on the cost side. Uh, you're going to have to implement data centers and a lot of new infrastructure to support the cloud. So initially, your costs are going to go up. Uh, now, again, over time, those costs should start coming down with scalability, uh, you ultimately should have lower labor costs and lower costs in general than you did before the transformation. So TSIA is spending a lot of time uh, helping companies make sure that this fish that you see in this picture is as skinny as possible. So we're trying to help them uh, actively improve uh, the re recurring revenue and the renewals so that uh, revenue number doesn't drop quite so low. 
We're trying to help with efficiencies and uh, boosting profitability so that cost uh, doesn't go up quite so much. And we're also trying to shorten that transformation time. Uh, so this is really at the crux of uh, what so many companies are dealing with today, a lot of the financials uh, that you're seeing, and a lot of the nervousness in Wall Street is because that old reliable revenue and cost model that everybody knew for decades uh, simply isn't uh, applying anymore. Uh, so Chad mentioned the importance of customer success, and TSIA has what we call the layer model, land, adopt, expand, and renew. The land part is really still in the domain of sales, but adopt, expand, and renew are all about customer success. So this is how we make sure uh, that customers are getting the value that they anticipate when they make that purchase, and if they receive the value they anticipate, it means they're much more likely to renew and buy a additional technology or services from us moving forward. So the first step is making sure they're adopting and consuming the technology. That allows us to offer additional products and services that will give them even additional uh, business value. And finally, making sure that we can renew them uh, because as most of you know, you're probably not even profitable for the first two or three year subscription that you sell to a customer. So if they don't renew for that second contract, uh, you possibly will even lose money uh, on, on the deal. So getting into uh, customer success, if we're looking at the uh, adopt, renew, and expand, uh, these are the three profiles. So when we go out to customer success organizations and we survey them about what their charter is, what their primary goals are, we see that they tend to be split among these three areas. So the largest percentage, 40%, are focused on adoption and consumption. And I'm sure you're, you've all read uh, the first book that our executives published a few years back, which was Complexity Avalanche, and that talks about the consumption gap, that customers buy technology with uh, anticipating a specific business value or a specific outcome in mind. And due to the rise of complexity and uh, a lot of other industry influences, it's getting harder for customers to get that value. So the difference between the anticipated value and the actual value is the consumption gap. And looking at adoption is helping us to understand which customers are behind the adoption curve. Maybe we don't have enough people logging in. Maybe they're not spending enough time in the system. Maybe they're not uh, utilizing but a tiny percent of the technology that they've purchased. So the more information we can get uh, about how they're consuming, uh, we can begin to work with customers to move them up that adoption curve so they get to that value faster and more fully. Next we have the retainers, and this is 37% of customer success organizations. And these are the people who are worried about uh, making sure that we're renewing those contracts and retaining our business. And historically, I think that very often, uh, starting you know a decade ago, sales usually was in charge of renewals. And this was very problematic because sales are primarily gold or incented on the initial sale. They don't make a lot of money on the renewal in most companies. And that meant that renewals were kind of an afterthought. It's what they worked on when their new deals were quiet. Uh, very often, Often you had problem accounts, and you didn't even worry about that until maybe a week before the renewal. And obviously, if you've had a problem account for a couple of years, uh, trying to fix it the week before the renewal is never going to work. Uh, so that kind of goes hand in hand with the adoption, so we can understand which customers are adopting at the right uh, levels and at the right speed, and who we think is probably going to run into problems at renewal time so we can start putting some uh, programs in place to boost uh, their success, their outcomes, uh, before that renewal conversation ever starts. And finally, a an important step, but it's still only 10% of customer success, focus on expand selling. So now that they're successful, they're getting value, they're happy with us, what are additional products and services that we can sell them that will accelerate uh, their ability to get to business value even faster and even more? So those are the three profiles of customer success that we see 
Uh, customer success is definitely our fastest growing business right now. We are uh, collecting more and more data, uh, definitely be releasing some new customer success info uh, in Las Vegas. Uh, but one of the interesting things is where customer success managers come from. And uh, in the beginning, we saw some companies that were just taking their customer support organization and renaming them customer success. I think everybody knows now customer support and customer success are very different different animals. And it's very interesting if we look at where the success managers are come from. And if we look at the adoption, uh, we see that 40% come from support and 41% come from professional services. So why are professional services such good success managers? And my opinion on that is because the, the PS consultants, they really have the business acumen to understand how companies utilize the technology and services to achieve business outcomes. So, you know, I've spent my career in customer support, and customer support technicians know the technology backwards and forwards, but they don't always know how people use the tools. And obviously, the use cases for the technology can vary uh, considerably depending on the size of the company, the industry they're in, maybe even the geography of the company. And PS gets that because they've been on-site implementing the tools. They know what the goals are. They know how the products are customized, etc. So it turns out that professional services has a very big role to play in ensuring customer success. Uh, we also see uh, smaller percentages coming from sales and marketing. Uh, very small percentage from the product. I'm kind of surprised I would expect that product number to be a little bit higher. Uh, but as we get uh, more companies benchmarking and more data, uh, we'll probably see these numbers begin to shift uh, just a bit. So I wanted to touch on uh, a little bit on adoption, on uh, renewals, and on expand selling. And on adoption, uh, there is so much focus on this. Uh, if you look at, uh, we track service business challenges or sort of what's keeping executives up at night. And if you look at all of the in inquiries we have received from members, all of the problems they've come to us uh, for help on so far this year in uh, 2016, about half of the top Top 20 service business challenges are all related to customer success, and a lot of them are about adoption services. How do we measure adoption? How do we identify problem customers? How do we get at that uh, consumption information? And uh, very happy to say that there are some good technology platforms available. Uh, one of the best happens to be our uh, sponsor today, Service Source. They were the very first uh, that I was ever aware of op offering. Uh, uh, consumption monitoring, consumption analytics. Um, just a little word of warning, there are seem to be a new consumption analytics uh, company coming to market every week. A lot of them are one or two people working out of a garage. Uh, so you have to be very careful because there are a lot of claims being made by uh, companies that haven't even released a product to the market yet, and they're making a lot of claims. Uh, so be very careful and definitely look for technology providers that have uh, a real uh, list of successful customers that you can talk to. So uh, on the, the topic of adoption services, uh, this uh, slide was um, provided by Julia Stegman, who runs our service revenue generation group. And she surveyed her members to find out what sort of uh, so offerings are you coming to market with to help around adoption and consumption? And you can see that they, uh, there's an awful lot of different offers across adoption planning, consumption monitoring, optimization, and process consulting because it, sometimes it turns out that our customers may be uh, – in such a quandary internally that they really need help transforming their processes in order to take advantage of the technology and services you offer. Uh, so absolutely introducing uh, some consulting offerings or partnering with someone uh, to help is increasingly important. So on the uh, renewal side, uh, again, Julia Stegman uh, very kindly provided the slide for me. This is something that she introduced into her benchmark study this year for service revenue generation, and it's the revenue waterfall. And the approach here, and this is just using some sample numbers, uh, you start with the starting contract value, and then when they're up for renewal, there's probably a price increase involved. So you're going uh, forward with this uh, number you can see in this example 
example, it's the 103 million that you're asking them to renew. Then we have the uh, attrition, the percentage of customers that decide not to renew. And we also have uh, some downselling, and these are the discounts that sometimes you've got some problem customers and you have to give them a bit of a discount to convince them to renew. Uh, and then we have the upsell option. Can we sell them some additional products and services, and the total of those activities end up with the renewal number. Uh, and then we have a separate uh, motion going on for the upsell, cross-sell uh, outcome services, and that's where we can boost that contract value a little bit more. So this revenue waterfall is a, a really simple approach uh, to identifying what your goals and what reality are uh, when it comes to uh, your subscription business. Well, I'm the technology guy, and uh, so uh, if we uh, look at uh, some of the, the, the technology that's enabling all of this, I'll get to that in just a minute, uh, but I wanted to show some actual data uh, on renewal rates. And so here we see, this is from our support services benchmark, uh, if we look at the industry uh, in general, and that includes a lot of on-premise companies using uh, the maintenance agreements, we see that the average renewal rate is 83. 3%, while the pure SaaS companies are renewing at 92.6, 93%. So we're seeing that they're doing 10% uh, better uh, than the traditional companies. So that's a really good sign. It means that uh, the cloud customers seem to be getting the value that they anticipate. They're renewing at a faster rate than on-premise customers. Uh, and also good is the fact that the percentage re receiving a renewal is lower, so only about 11% of cloud companies uh, are 11% of cloud customers are demanding a renewal in order uh, a discount in order to renew and then finally we look at the discount percent we can see that the average discount given is a little bit lower in the cloud as well so Chad was talking about you know, the struggle for revenue, and I mentioned the struggle for uh, profitability, but the numbers here seem to indicate that if we can get uh, the revenue up, that we're going to be more profitable than we were in the past. So back to my first slide about the fish, uh, I think that we are making progress here. We're helping, helping companies make that transition. Uh, it's just going to take a little bit of time to get the scalability required to ultimately receive that higher revenue and lower costs that we were anticipating. So here is the slide I, I was keying up to before. Uh, I do a survey in the spring of each year about uh, technology plan spending. And this is a look at what percentage of members have budget for new or additional technology in these four areas over the next two years. So this is for a, a two-year look. Uh, CRM, obviously everybody's got a CRM system in place, but spending on CRM <laughs> never stops. Uh, not only are we seeing additional modules coming out, uh, but a lot of folks are shifting from old legacy CRM systems to newer, more nimble uh, cloud CRM. So we're continuing to see a lot of money uh, spent on improving and beefing up CRM. A lot of companies are on a consolidation project to go from you know, 12 or 15 CRM systems down to one. Uh, but interestingly, look at the SRG service revenue generation. 95% of them are planning a CRM investment. And very often, that's some additional modules around renewals and expand selling. Uh, the next technology area is recurring revenue automation. And this is the technology offered by companies such as Service Source that allows you to plan how likely is each customer to renew. Who are your likely problem customers? Helping you sort of automate that process, making sure that you're working on that renewal throughout the entire life of the contract, not just, as I said before, the week before they expire, worrying about uh, who may have a problem. And we can see uh, of the service revenue generation group, uh, three-fourths. 76% have budget to invest in this technology, so very popular tool. Uh, I talked earlier about consumption analytics, and it's no surprise that 78% of customer success organizations have budget uh, for customer success uh, consumption monitoring, consumption analytics technology. Uh, so that is a very hot market at the moment. Uh, so much interesting things going on there. Uh, some of the 
new topics are around machine learning, trying to help establish uh, what that consumption profile or adoption profile should look uh, for individual customers. So it's uh, getting a lot easier to identify who's ahead of the curve and who's behind the curve and may be having problems. And finally, one thing that I wanted to include in here is entitlement management. And uh, entitlement used to be so simple, you either had a contract or you didn't. But it's getting a lot trickier today, especially with enterprise accounts, uh, because they may have uh, 10 or 50 of your products. They may have different service level agreements for different serial numbers for different products. Uh, you've got different people who are entitled to call in or not to call in, and some products may be on 9 to 5, some are 7 by 24. Uh, so we're finding that companies are investing in additional technology around managing entitlements uh, because obviously one way to anger your customers is not to give them the level of service that they have paid for. Uh, so uh, seeing quite a bit of investment here to make sure that not only are we able to offer much more granular uh, service offers and uh, upsell opportunities around uh, ex uh, Set premier service programs, for example, but we're able to guarantee that we're delivering those to the customers who have paid for them. So we're getting uh, close to the bottom of the hour here, and I'd like to turn things back over to Chad Line to talk about the five takeaways for you on transformation. So Chad, back to you. Thanks for that, John. Uh, you know, great, great insights there, and look forward to, to seeing some of the, the additional data that you'll be presenting at, uh, at Las Vegas, so look forward to it. I think the stuff that John presented really does highlight for, for all of us that these are challenging times for businesses, but really exciting times as well that present enormous opportunity for those companies that are able to successfully navigate the transition. For me, I believe success in the transformation boils down to the five key takeaways that you see here. First is a focus on outcomes. Understand at a deep level what your customers are trying to achieve. They don't want hardware, software, or subscriptions in and of themselves. Understand what ultimately matters to them, so you have to have conversations with them on a regular basis. And then align your organization at every customer touch point, whether that's onboarding, adoption, at the renewal time, etc., to be able to measure, manage, and deliver on those outcomes. Second point is to organize around the customer experience. Customers want you to engage with them, but they want the engagement to be effortless. Remove the pain of siloed departments, personalize the experience, and be proactive and prescriptive in your interactions, and you'll ultimately have more intimate, insightful, intimate and insightful customer relationships. Third is to staff for customer success, as John has been talking about here in the investments that companies are making within that realm. Shift the mindset from transactions to relationships. It's not about having people who know all the ins and outs of your product or service, and it's not about hiring quota-killing salespeople or renewals reps. It's about having people on your team who are expert at figuring out the quote-unquote job your customer wants done, the outcomes that they need to be successful. And then equip these customer success professionals with the appropriate resources, tools, and technologies to help their customers succeed. Fourth is to differentiate with data. Your customers assume that you have a single holistic view of them, and frankly, they most likely don't care or appreciate that there are often many systems of record with disparate data and information. At ServerSource, we often see that this is where the really heavy lifting is, so be sure to focus investments appropriately in the people, the processes, and the technology to enable and enhance your data to deliver on the outcomes. Fifth and lastly, there are a lot of other smart people and organizations out there who are at various stages of transformation. I'm probably a little biased here, but I would say that TSIA has some great data, insights, and analysis. Service Source has best practices, playbooks, and capabilities from helping companies in this space for 17 years, and there are various other organizations that have learnings that could be applied to your business. So as we wrap up today, and on that last point about learning from others, I would definitely encourage you to join TSIA in Las Vegas this October, and I also welcome you to stop by our booth as well. With that, Inga, we'll open it up for questions. Thank you, Chad, and thank you, John. Uh, both, both of you shared some really insightful and really interesting data, uh, so thank you very much for that. Uh, so we are moving on to the Q&A portion of today's webinar. If you have any questions for John or Chad, uh, take, this opportunity, I'll take this opportunity to ask those questions live via the Ask a Question box on the left side of the webinar player. So first question uh, goes back to the renewal rates. Uh, so John, um, are your renewal rates based on revenue dollars or total customers? 
Well, I think the best answer to that is yes, uh, <laughs> because we do track uh, revenue and total customers and renewals uh, uh, different ways in different areas. The numbers that I showed were from the support services benchmark. Uh, that is a bit high level. That, I believe, is just based on total customers that ask what percent of your customers renewed uh, over the last year, and of that percentage that renewed, what, what percentage of those did you have to offer a discount to? Uh, but uh, in the service revenue generation benchmark, they get into a lot more grant Annular data about uh, the the revenue percent and the cost percent, uh, etc. So uh, I would definitely say we cover it from multiple perspectives, and definitely the SRG benchmark is getting a lot deeper uh, into that. So I was sharing some of the higher level support services data, but if you're an SRG member, you definitely can talk to Julia and and go quite a bit deeper. Yeah, and the, I just add on to that. To that, John, you know, at, at service source of the clients to where we provide uh, renewal services, uh, you know, across the spectrum, we do see and track that in a lot of different ways, whether it's uh, customers or dollars or, or a number of different factors. The one thing I would say is, is you know, there is no one size fits all for a business. If you look at, especially the SaaS companies in the in the space. Um, you know, a lot of different ways to calculate it. There's a lot of different stuff that they'll put into the denominator or, or take out of the numerator, et cetera, to get a view. So comparability between businesses does become a little tough, but I think that the key is to figure out, uh, you know, what do you want to include in your business and track, and then be consistent with that over a, over a long period of time so you can understand are you improving or, or are things going sideways on you. Great. Thank you so much, Chad. Uh, so we are coming to the conclusion of today's presentation. Uh, just a couple of quick reminders that there will be an exit survey at the end of today's webinar. Uh, please take a moment to provide your feedback on the content and experience by filling out the brief survey. And finally, a link to the recorded version of today's webinar and access to download the PDF of the presentation will be sent out in the next 24 hours via email. Again, I'd like to take this time to thank John and Chad for a really insightful session today, and to everyone for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us on today's webinar, Transform to a Profitable subs Subscription Business, brought to you by TSIA and sponsored by Service Source. My name is Ingen Triago, and we hope to see you at our next TSA webinar very soon. Have a great day, everyone.